scriptures, you know, we talk about the, our, our beliefs, our doctrinal beliefs as a church. And I just want to share with you very quickly, and then I'll go into the message. What do we believe as a church, as the church of God? We believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible, in one God eternally existing in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, that Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised from the dead, that he ascended into heaven and is today at the right hand of the Father as the intercessor. Number four, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And um, that all of sin comes from the glory of God, and that repentance is commanded of God for all and necessary for the forgiveness of sins, which these have done. The justification, regeneration, and new birth were wrought by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Number six, in sanctification. Sanctification means that we're set apart, subsequent to new birth, through faith in the blood of Christ, through the Word, and by the Holy Spirit. And number seven, holiness. To be, be God's standard for living um, in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, subsequent to a clean heart. We, during the convention or during the prayer conference, um, the speaker asked Doug Small, Dr. Doug Small said, um, who is God? And everybody said, God is love. But he said, no, we're, we're, you're, not, you're not correct. God is first, first holy. Amen. Uh, because a lot of the world says, you know, because God is love, then I can do what, live though any way I can, and God will still um, love me. And yes, He does still love us because He's a merciful God. But God is first of all holy, and because He is holy, it makes His love few, pure. Because perfect love casts it out of fear, right? And so um, we don't fear where, where, when somebody loves us with a pure heart. Can you say Amen? In the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Subsequent to a clean heart. Number nine, in speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, and that is the final, that is, is the initial evidence, not the final evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There are other evidences of being filled with the Spirit, like love and grace and mercy and truth, the fruits of the Spirit. Um, these are all uh, evidences of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then today, in immersion, number ten, in baptism by immersion, and that all who repent should be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Number 11, in divine healing. That divine healing is provided for all in the atonement. Number 12, in the Lord's Supper and washing of the saints' feet. And uh, we haven't washed the saints' feet in a while, and we need to do that. Um, we are commanded by Scripture. In the pre-millennial second coming of Jesus, first to resurrect the righteous dead and to catch away the living saints to Him in the air. Second, to the reign on earth of a thousand years. And then fourthly and boldly in the bodily resurrection, eternal life of the righteous and eternal punishment for the wicked. And these teachings actually, uh, the declaration of faith is out on the foyer. How many of you know it's there? How many of you have read it? It's out there in a huge picture frame, beautiful picture frame. Amen? amen. So stop by and read it because you need to know what you believe. Can you say Amen. All right, we want to talk about uh, water baptism. In, in Article 10 of the Declaration of Faith says that we believe in water baptism by immersion, which I just shared with you, and all who repent should be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I, am, I, I normally talk to those who have received Christ, and, and uh, we seem to wait a long time before we, we get baptized in water. Don't wait. Because you remember the man that was on the cross, the, 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 that asked Jesus, he said, um, can I come re be received into your kingdom? And Jesus said, yes. And some people take that as being that I don't need to be baptized. He couldn't be baptized because of where he was. I mean, it was impossible at that time. But Jesus welcomed him into the kingdom. But so we, all of us, those who have accepted Christ, um, we need to be baptized. If you remember the eunuch who was traveling and um, as as he uh, was, as, as Stephen was joined to him, and they, he was preaching to him, and he was convicted of his sin, and he said, um, and he said, here's water, what hindered me from being baptized? And right away he was baptized. Now, he wasn't in a baptism class, he, he wasn't in an eight-week week course, he just got baptized. Now, I believe in eight-week courses, and I believe in baptism classes, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is that sometimes we wait a long time 
to get baptized. But we, we need to, to take that step of faith as soon as possible because it's a step in our growth. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. So water baptism was practiced in the New Testament and times as an outward physical symbol of an inward spiritual experience. So it's an outward uh, work that, that is being done um, of something that's happened inside. And we're saying to the world, we're saying to the world, this is, I am, I am, I am getting baptized and I'm, I want the world to know that I'm now set apart to Christ and I'm not a child of God. And so it's an outward uh, symbol of a work that's done in us inwardly. Can you say amen? amen? Water baptism, repentance, or repentant sinners that bowed in the presence of God were given, forgiven of their sins and are imparted a new nature. This was regeneration of the new birth as Jesus called it. Amen? So repentant sinners that have bowed in the presence of God. Baptism is the first set, in the first century church was performed by the baptizer entering into the water with the candidate, dipping him beneath the water and raising him up or her up. We don't believe in sprinkling because the Bible says that Jesus went in and up and out of the water. Amen? So we, we baptize by dipping. I remember, I was saying to the candidates this morning, I remember when I got baptized, I don't know, I probably was about 10, 12, I don't even remember when I was baptized, but it was by the riverside, right? Five, six, three and a half mile wide river, and um, there were no bathrooms, you just, you know, you just bush, right? So you went and you got changed in one side, and some, you know, they put up a, a screen and whatever. So you got that, and, and the water that day was very muddy. So, but it doesn't matter about how muddy the water. This water is clean, by the way. It's okay. Um, it, it was muddy. But, you know, I remember after being baptized and, and uh, the next day and how excited I was. And there was something that happened inside of me. Praise God. And I was just excited about what God was doing in my life. And I remember walking in the fields and doing my chores. And I was whistling and singing and thanking God. So, you know, um, so this is what we believe in as far as water baptism is concerned. And, these folks are going to be uh, um, baptized. In the later century, some churches altered the mode by, or method by pouring water over ca the candidate's head or by sprinkling. But the Church of God continues to follow the New Testament pattern of immersion. When you're saved, you experience a spiritual baptism into the body of Christ. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 10 explains, Paul explains that total redemption experience, forgiveness of sins, death to sins, and new life or the quickening to holiness. So when we're saved, we're baptized into the body of Christ. The body of Christ are all born again or believers who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You are part of the body of Christ. Today you will become a part of the Abundant Life Church of God by receiving membership, by getting baptized. But you, we are all part of the family of God. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. In this experience, you are crucified with Christ, buried with Him, and raised him, in Him with the new list of life. When you go into the water, the significance of that is that you, you're, you are now buried with Christ, your old life. Whatever was in the past, everything that's in your old life is buried. It's, it's dead. And when you are raised up, you are being raised up in the newness of life. Amen. Now, now, it doesn't mean that that's it. But water baptism, isn't it? You, there's got to be continual transformation that takes place in our lives. Yes, we have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we have been saved through through the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ, but we continue our growth. Amen? We continue uh, to live a life that is pleasing and holy to God, and as we get into the Word, and as we allow the Holy Spirit to begin to minister and speak to us and through us, there we are changed from glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. In, the, in this experience, you are crucified with Christ and buried with Him and raised into the newness of life. Through the act of water baptism, though the act of water baptism is not an act of joining the church, it's a public announcement that the believer is joined to Christ and is identified with Christ and His church. You know, in, in maybe in North America, this is not so significant. But if you're a Hindu or if you are a Muslim or you are from some other uh, faith or religion, this is, has so much more significance to those, those religions because it, is, it says to, the, to their family, it says to the world, you are it, literally in some of these places, you could lose your life. 
You could lose your life if they know you're, you're, you have been baptized. You know why? Because this is saying that now I am a Christian. I have now identified with the Christian church. And, and you could lose your life. In North America, it's very simple. We have water, we get baptized, and, and, and you know we celebrate in the church. But, but it really significantly to, to us in that sense uh, doesn't maybe have that much meaning to, to a lot of us. But really and truly, this, this significance um, and the meaning of water baptism uh, in some other places, in other countries, really, it, it's, it, it's life-changing, life-altering, not only spiritually, but in the sense of the community and where they live. Can you say amen? amen. And, and so um, we now identify with Christ and we now identify with the church. Uh, water baptism is more than an outward sign. It brings real spiritual benefits into the heart of the, the believer. The biblical formula for baptism is stated in the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen? So when we baptize candidates, we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, God, the Word of God has given us the, the formula. We don't baptize you in the name of Jesus, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The reason for this formula is that these are the words of Christ Himself and the formal institution of baptism in the program of the church. Another reason for using this formula is that it directs worship towards the triune God. It's not because you got saved under um, so-and-so's ministry or you got saved under my ministry or you got saved under uh, someone else's ministry or somebody shared the gospel with you. We don't take the credit for that. It's God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work, that convicts of sin. Amen? And we give God the praise and the honor and the glory for saving people. I, I, I can't save anybody. You can't save anybody. None of us can say, but we can be instruments in the hands of God to share the gospel and to share the good news with those who need Jesus Christ. God uses us. God uses people. But it's the Holy Spirit that bans conviction of sin. We can't force anybody to follow Jesus. Can you say amen? Yes, sir. Praise God. So um, uh, another reason for using this formula, as I said, is it directs worship towards a trying God. Though, though, though baptism does not regenerate and does not constitute an act of salvation, it's a the spiritual duty and privilege that we have. The scripture indicates that all who are saved and willfully neglect baptisms are committing sin. James chapter 4 verses 17 and Luke 7 and 30. Um, so a lot of people can get baptized. You can get baptized. You, can have, you, you may have been baptized in the church, but you have not, you're not saved. Pastor Ron, how, how do you, there are a lot of a lot of churches who baptize children. But I don't know, and I, I, can't, I can't judge them, I don't know if they've made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. So just getting baptized mean, doesn't mean that you're saved. Right? The formula is that you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and life, and you ask Him for forgiveness of sins, and you invite Jesus into your heart and your life. And, and then after that, after you've committed your life to Christ, and you've committed yourself to Jesus as Lord, then you get baptized. Not the other way around. So there may be a lot of you who have, sitting in the congregation, I'm not condemning you, you may have been baptized, maybe as a child, but you didn't commit your life to Jesus Christ. So being baptized, being sprinkled, whatever it is that, that took place in your life at that point, doesn't mean that you are saved. It's by grace we are saved, through faith in Jesus Christ. Not because the priest or somebody else sprinkled water on you, you're saved. There are millions of people who have been sprinkled by water. But are they living their lives to follow Jesus Christ? Amen? I'm not saying that they're not saved because if they, could, if they were sprinkled with water and they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then that's wonderful. They're saved. Amen? They're living a life that's pleasing to God and walking with Him. So I want to, I want to make sure that we understand this this morning. Amen?